welcome to this week's Uber Chef Cook Along. I'm about to take you through the 10 dishes that we've made for you this week. If you don't want to watch the whole thing, just skip to a certain dish that you've got in your box. Remember, unpack your order, get all the little uh, components ready, check it off on the list, get it stored in the fridge, and then when, watch the video I suggest, and then you're all ready to get going. Really, really simple with cracking results coming up. Okay, let's ease ourselves into the first part of the menu. So, get your focaccia. This is just a uh, Gordo olive and Isle of Wight tomato, the best tomato focaccia in here, wrapped in foil so it doesn't dry out in the oven. That's going to go in the oven for about 8 to 10 minutes. So, in that goes. And then, whilst that's cooking, make sure you get your basil rapes and all jam out. So, this is a basil oil infused, really, really like, nice. And then we've blitzed it up with a few secret ingredients. So, you've got this like, almost like jammy texture. See, that's all nice and thick and this is ready to dip your focaccia into. So I'm going to leave this at room temperature just to warm up whilst my uh, focaccia is finishing off. I'm going to get it into a little pot and then we're going to be all ready to plate this up. Alright, let's grab the focaccia out. Just be careful of hot trays. Now let's unwrap it. And look at that. Lovely slab of focaccia. What I suggest you do a little bit of uh, rapeseed, olive oil, up completely up to you. Real good glug about on the top. We've already put some on for you, but I suggest just a little bit more, and then a nice bit of mold and salt, just on the top. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take off the edge, which of course I'm gonna eat before it goes to the table. Now I'm just gonna go through, like so. I'm gonna cap four nice pieces of that, and then let's get that onto a bit of spelt here that I've got ready to present it. Look at that. Lovely Isle of Wight tomatoes. Gordo olives going through all that layering of the, of the uh, focaccia. And there's my basil rapes and oil jam just to go to the table. Enjoy. So, um, we did have a nice mackerel ceviche on the menu for this, uh, this week, but unfortunately it seems that the mackerel aren't in the sea anymore, so we've got a nice fillet of gilt head bream instead. It comes to you all lovely and charred, just on the top, nice and scored, so the uh, skin will go lovely and crispy. That's going to go in the oven for about three to four minutes. So in that goes. And then the garnish. Um, you see here I've got a lovely selection of our white tomatoes again, so a bang on in season, they're so tasty. We've got all the different colours, and in there there's some coriander as well. There's a little bit of chilli, there's red onion, uh, and of course lots of lime zest in there. Then the dressing, which I've sent you with, see here this is a tomato water, so we hang the tomatoes up uh, once they're all chopped, uh, and then the, all the juice just drips out the bottom. This is just mixed with some shallots in there, seasoning. I'm gonna get a little bit of that onto my, onto my tomatoes, and as well, extra seasoning. So, good bit of seasoning on there. Don't be scared about seasoning because obviously it takes quite a lot. And then give that a little mix over. And then just let that sit. You want it to come up to room temperature so that you get the full flavour of the tomatoes. And then just let that sit for a, a, the rest of the time whilst your fish is cooking. The, the uh, vinaigrette's going to start working the tomatoes and drawing the juice out of them. It's just going to be absolutely beautiful. And I'll be back in about two or three minutes and we'll show you plating this one up. So I'm just going to get my tomatoes now, I'm going to build them up in the bowl. Basically what you want to do, just you can use a plate bowl, whichever you like, but I'm just going to kind of layer them up in here so I can see everything going on. Get some of that nice onion in there. You can see quite a bit of the juice is always starting to come out of the tomatoes now, and that's when you know that the, the salt started to work on them. And honestly, the flavour is just absolutely fantastic. So more tomatoes going in there. Make sure that coriander's all kind of nicely placed around. And then on the final, we'll get a little lovely green tomato sack in there. And the same with the garnish. Red onion, pieces, some of that chilli. The chilli's cut really, really finely, so you just get a touch of heat going through it. So, a little bit more. And then, let's get our fish out. Comes. Just sizzling away there. Let's get a spatula so we don't kind of break the fish. It's quite simply, look at that. Sometimes simple things are the best, of course. Let's get rid of that. A little clean in our bowl. And just to finish, a touch more dressing. Not over the fish because we don't want to kind of make that skin all soft. 
but I want a good bit of that dressing to really make it all lovely and tasty. And there we go. That's my fillet of gilt head bream, tomato ceviche with a touch of chilli, lime and red onion. Up next, my starter for you is this uh, salad of duck. So I've got a duck pastrami just in here. So I'll just undo that and show you. So we brine the duck and we've smoked it four hours. It comes to you in this lovely little parcel. So you can see all that duck breast just there. It's got some juniper, coriander seeds on the top. Then we've got a comfy duck cigarette. Uh, just some foie brick pastry. That's going to go in the oven for about five minutes. Just a crisp up, that's not long come out the fryer, so um, I'm just going to put it in there for a very short time, but once it's crispy, it's ready to go. And then your salad. So just come into season, lovely apricots. So we've got some sliced apricots in here, fine beans as well. And what we're going to do, take your lemon thyme dressing, a little bit of lemon thyme dressing over the top, and again, touch your seasoning. Just give that a really, really gentle mix. You don't want to break up the, um, the actual slices of apricot. That's lovely. And then my garnishes have also got an almond granola just here. And of course we've got the duck. So let's start building this up. Get some beans. Lovely bright green haricot beans. They're just, they're not crunchy, so they're not going to squelch in your mouth, but they've still got just a tiny little bit of bite to them. So. I'm going to get a nice few of those. This is forming my little base for my salad, but I'm going to leave a few from the top. Then let's get some of our apricots. Let's put a few slices just around, a few just kind of curled over. Be nice and delicate because of course they're quite, they're quite fine. Then a little bit of granola, just a tiny bit. That's just gonna add a nice little extra crunch to the dish. So, then we're gonna to come to our duck. I'm just gonna take a piece of duck and I'm gonna kind of like curl them. Just kind of spread them across, no particular placing here. Just trying to make this look nice. Nice and organic, I think the word is. So a few more. There we go. Then let's go back to our our apricots and fine beans and look we're just gonna add a few more all the way around it again not too placed and then take some of those sliced of, slice of apricots that you've got left you see I'm just kind of letting them sit on the top layer so instantly you've got height to your salad which is really really important here Few more. Let's use all that apricot. And this you're going to get a nice sweetness. And you've got the vinaigrette to cut through it. Lovely. Then, just before we bring out our cigarette, a touch more dressing. Every bite you're going to get a little bit of dressing, a little bit of crunch from the granola, the duck with that almost touch of spice from there. So, and then finally. Let's grab our cigarette out. Here we go. Onto our board. And I'm going to carefully just place that just on the side, like so. There you go. Duck two ways with a little comfy duck cigarette, the pastrami, and that really, really fresh salad, apricots, fine beans. So with hotter weather all upon us now, uh, next starter is a chilled soup. So like a vicious was, uh, we've got our chilled leek and potato velouté just here. So make sure that stays in the fridge until you're ready to serve it. Really want it to be nice and cold. Um, we've got a crispy hen's egg here. That's going to go in the oven for about five or six minutes. Soon that goes. If you want the egg cooked a bit more, if you don't like the runny yolk, obviously cook it a bit more in the oven an extra three, four minutes. My garnishes. Lovely vibrant green leek oil just there, truffle creme fraiche in this one, and then I've got a little bit of air dried leek, uh, just that really kind of to give it the, uh, the full on leek flavour, um, which will go really lovely with the blue taste. So make sure you've got your bowl, 
I'm going to put my bowl in my freezer now uh, to chill that down nicely and put my blue tape back in uh, the fridge and then I'll be back to show you how to put this one together. So, nice cold bowl, all ready to go. First things first, get your truffle creme fresh. Give it a nice stir and put a nice spoon of that in the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit the egg on top and then when you break into the egg and eat the soup, you're going to get that lovely hit of the creme fraiche at the bottom. So let's get our egg out. Out it comes. A tiny bit of molten salt just on the top. Let's sit the egg straight in the centre of the creme fraiche. Then let's get our nice chilled potato velouté. Just cut the edge off the bag. And then all you need to do is just carefully pour that around like so. See how I'm just encasing the truffle velouté. Sorry, the truffle creme fresh in there. Like so. A little wobble just to make that nice and smooth. Then we'll go touch a leak oil. So get some of that green oil. Look at that. Lovely vibrant colour on the top. There we go. That's all on. And lastly, just get a little pinch of your, your nice air dried leek and just sit that just on the top of your egg. There you go. Beautiful starter, perfect for a hot uh, sunny day. Lovely warm yolk in the centre as you're going to get into there with your knife and it's all going to fly out to the soup. Uh, so that's my truffled and um, little creme fraiche, crispy hen's egg and the lovely chilled leaky potato maluto. Really special main course now for you. Um, this is a fish course. So the first one is this Catalonia place. Uh, so in here, we've got a place to fill it just in the center. And then we've wrapped that in a mousse of sea trout. So a really, really delicate mousse of sea trout. And also there's a little layer of tiger prawns going through it as well. And then, if that's not enough, we've wrapped it in some nice green and yellow courgettes. What you want to do is, I've got a pan of simmering water just here. So be, be nice and careful. Best way probably is to get a spoon, put it in, put it onto the spoon, and just lower it into the water. Okay, like that. Back on to the heat. You just want it on just the edge. I'm going to set my timer just going here as well. You want it just simmering in a way. Get a little cover on there as well. But don't, you don't want it boiling because otherwise the fish will overcook. It wants to be in there for about 10 minutes uh, and then we're going to take it out, we're going to let it rest just slightly, then we're going to unwrap it. So my garnishes, I've got a lovely bird blanc sauce here, so a touch of that vinegariness to that which will really going to cut, uh, cut through the mousse nicely. Then we've got some braised potato just here, we've got some soft herbs and we've got a bit of avruga av caviar. What we're going to do, about 8 minutes or so once our cannelloni has, has been cooking for, and get my bird blanc on the, on the heat. Bring that up just to a simmer. I'm going to add my potatoes to that, put a lid on it, continue cooking that just to warm the potatoes. Don't need to boil it, just very, very uh, careful so not to break up the potato. And then I'm going to get my herbs, put my herbs into the bird blanc, give it a stir, take it off the heat straight away. Um, then the caviar will be left just to garnish the plate up. So, back in about eight minutes, I'm going to show you how to put this lovely Catalonian place together. Okay, I'm almost ready to plate up my place now, so I've got a up there. That's my bird blanc, so you can see it. Look, just taking it off, it's not boiling away, it's just warmed up. The potatoes and then the herbs have just gone in, so they're all nice and green. Really, really important. Take your tray, little uh, slotted spoon or a spider, and get your cannelloni out. So, see there, see it's nice and you can feel that it's nice and firmed up. Be careful of that, of course, because it's quite warm. So. Take your scissors. Now you could either do this one or two ways. I would say just carefully pull that clean film back. You can just get a little scissors and just put a little line down it. But just hold the clean film, of course, because it's quite hot. There you go. Just like so. Get rid of that clean film. And then get your spoon back. Let's just very, very carefully turn that over. Then, a tiny bit of oil on the top. That's gonna to give it a lovely shine. Just a few fingers, see I'll just rub that oil into the courgette. And nice bit of molten salt on there. We don't season this before it goes, otherwise the courgette would 
really kind of like lose all its moisture quite quickly. But then, in your bowl, let's not lose the heat now. So let's get all of those lovely cubes of a potato. This is a real simple dish to garnish. I want, want it all to be about the, that cannelloni. So potatoes, plenty of beurre blanc. Got chives in there, chervil, tarragon, real nice aniseed. There we go. Then let's take our cannelloni, rock that back onto the spoon, into the middle of your dish. And then just to finish off, let's get a nice bit of caviar. Let's have Ruga caviar. So you can put a really good spoon of that on the top. Caviar is on tiniest little bit of rapeseed oil just to cut that sauce and there we go that's my cannelloni in place tiger prawn sea trout mousse beurre blanc touch of caviar this main course is uh, chicken a la vinaigrette so what we've got here we've got the lovely coloured off breast of corn fed chicken see that nice and golden in there from, from where it's eaten a lot lots and lots of corn of course and then go in your knife, carefully take that chicken breast out and just get that onto your tray. It's got a little bit of rapeseed oil in there, just with it, just to help it not stick to your tray. And then garnish, you've got cocotte potatoes. These are braised potatoes finished off in butter. That and the chicken are gonna go in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. So potatoes, nice little crisp on them, but chicken skin will start to crisp up as well. In they go. So 15 to 20 minutes on there. And then garnishes, I've got baby leeks just here. These have just been uh, braised and they're ready to go in the oven. They're just gonna take four or five minutes just to heat up. I've got some raw beans with some nice bits of tarragon going through a little bit of herb butter. Put a touch of water in there, just a tiny bit, like so. I'm gonna put those just on here. That'll be ready to hit. heat up very, very quickly. A um, little bit of chicken sauce, roasted chicken sauce, and of course our chicken vinaigrette. We've made a really heavily roasted chicken stock reduced it right down, and then that is in there. Touch of sherry vinegar, rapes it all, mustard, shallots, beautiful. So my leeks are gonna go in just when a chicken's coming to the end of cooking. I'm gonna warm my sauce up, gonna get my broad beans warmed up, and I'm gonna be right back and show you how to put it together. So chicken, broad beans all warmed up, hot plate, and my roasted chicken sauce. We've got a touch of dry sherry in there. Then it's all coming together. There's our chicken breast, there's our cocot potatoes, and there are our baby leeks. So, quite again, quite straightforward to plate this one up. Let's get a nice little pile. Same as the kind of a sort of footprint, as it were, of the chicken. Some nice tarragon in there. Lovely aniseed flavour. Then let's get our chicken. Sit the chicken breast on top. Get rid of that tray. Then we're going to get our cocotte potatoes. Let's get some of those placed round. There we go. So a few nice cocottes. Then with leeks. So with leeks, you can just kind of look at that, just sort of open them out slightly. Beautiful. Just got a little, little chefy trip, just sort of cut them on an angle. And then you can kind of I do that. So lovely. Last one. There we go. So that's where I leak. Then I'm gonna get a little bit of chicken glass. So this is really punchy. This is just to sort of tie it all together before our vinaigrette. So, more sauce on the table, of course, if you like. Give your chicken vinaigrette a nice little stir, a touch over the chicken, and then just split that sauce out. See what I mean? Splitting it out, kind of spoon it into the actual sauce and around, and you get that lovely like two-tone effect. There you have it. Nice and simple, chicken ala vinaigrette, cocotte potatoes, hope you enjoy.
vegetarian main course this week is a woodland mushroom risotto. So in here you've got your risotto rice. This has been three quarter cooked already. And then we've got what we've got is this is the cooking liquor which we cook the rice in. So really, really important that you get your risotto, the, the rice all out of the container, get the cooking liquor into the rice, and that's going to go on the heat. And what you want to do, bring it up to simmer, and then it's going to take about four to five minutes. Once it comes up to the simmer, keep on stirring it. And my garnishes, I've got a watercress and a little wild mushroom uh, salad, as it were. I'm just going to warm that up. So that's going to take about four to five minutes. That's it, in the oven. I've got some little sourdough croots just here. So lovely and thin and crispy sourdough croots. You can put them room temperature, or you can give them just a minute in the oven. I'm going to give mine a minute in the oven. And then garnishes, pecorino cheese, and some pickled shallots with a sherry vinegar. So I'll be back in about four minutes or so, four or five minutes, when I'm going to show you my risotto being finished off. So my risotto is just finishing off here. That's been about four to five minutes. Give it a nice stir. Over it comes. See how it's nice and creamy. Like right, risotto. There's no cream or anything like that in there, but you can see it's lovely and creamy just on there. There it goes. Let's get our plate. And let's get our garnishes. Crispy sourdough. Just a minute that's been warming up for. And my little bit of mushrooms and watercress on the top. So just gonna give that final stir all the time that is absorbing that liquid. So I don't want it to be soupy on the plate, but I want it to be not stodgy either, so on that goes. And then let's spread that out, like so. And then we're going to start getting our garnishes on the top. Here we go, so first of all, here come our little woodland mushrooms, watercress, just saute that really, really quick, so you still got a lovely bit of pepperiness coming through. There we go. A bit more of those. Move that out of the way. Then place some of our little shallot rings. So these have just been pickled. Touch of sherry vinegar, it brings out that lovely little pink colour as you can see. So a few of those on there. Then we'll get some of our sourdough croots happening. Let's just stand a few of those up. Again, not too placed, but just so it looks nice and dainty. I'm going to put quite a few on there because I really love that crunch with that risotto. And then finally, Let's get some of our pecorino little shavings. Pecorino just going really nice with this woodland mushroom flavour going through. So it's almost done. Tiny bit rapeseed, olive oil, whichever you prefer. And that's all good to go. Not just your normal mushroom risotto. Beautiful flavours in there. Hope you enjoy the vegetarian course. First dessert for you, uh, we've got a lovely lemon tart, so a mouthy lemon tart there, sweet pastry base. I've got a little bit of raspberry meringue to go with it, fresh raspberries, lemon curd yogurt, and then of course we've got a little bit of sugar just to go on the top. So just get the sugar just on to the top of your lemon tart, and then you can really do it however you like. You can get a little pad knife like this, and just, you see how just kind of make that nice and even on the top of the tart. If you've got a blowtorch, use that. But I'm gonna, just gonna, I'm sure most of you probably will be grilling it. So let's get it under the grill, nice hot grill. Grill right down on top of it. Then let's get our plate. You wanna keep an eye on the lemon tart. So you don't scramble it, like really kind of grill it too hard, but you just wanna very quickly get that, get that nice um, caramelization on there. So let's take a little spoon of our Lemon curd yogurt there, place that on. Then my raspberries, just gonna, a few little fresh raspberries just on the plate. There we go. And then here's our 
little meringue. So let's just kind of stand a few up. Quick check back to my tart, looking nice. Let's just turn it around. There we go. And then carry on quick placing our meringues down here. Like so. There we go. So we've got our meringues already. Little palette knife ready for our tart. Then let's bring that down. Make sure when you put it on, get a palette knife or something that you can just lift that off the tray so you're not going to burn yourself. A little bit of a tidy up just with the back of a knife just before you put it on the tray. Then you won't kind of mess your presentation up. There we go. And then let's get our tart, put that onto the plate. And there we go. So a lovely lemon tart. Get it to the table straight away so that sugar's nice and warm on the top of the caramelization. A really, really fresh dessert to start us off. Up next for our second dessert, we've got a tiramisu. Here it is. I've taken it out of the fridge about five or ten minutes before I'm going to serve it so it's not fridge cold. We've got a chocolate glaze on the top. Really, really lovely bit of chocolate glaze with some nice gold leaf just to finish it off. So, all you've got to do, get it onto your plate and then I'll set you with some really nice almond parmiers. So here they come. Now if you've got a bit of ice and sugar you want to dust them, it's up to you. I quite like them like this. So, see that? Lovely little biscuits with the frangipan going in and simply just line them up along the side. Look at that. How lovely is that? Tiramisu, you put a little bit on your warm palmier, what could be better? Hope you enjoy this one. Finishing off for you with Chef Menu this week, we've got our cheese course. This week we've got peach chutney, we've got black onion seed crackers, which are garnished our cheese. So, as usual, always take the cheeses out of the fridge, at least 20 minutes before you're going to serve it. That way they'll be uh, lovely and warmed up, they'll taste much, much better, I can assure you. So let's get a little palette knife. Let's start off, let's get our nice bit of Comte on there. Sorry, that was the Manchego. Then we're in our Comte, so we, we put them in nice uh, strength for a few. Telagio. This is a wash rind uh, cheese washed in champagne, that's our long. And then finally, this lovely bit of Gorgonzola. So line up your cheeses. If you're not sure, obviously, you get this lovely little cheese tasting notes tells you the milk that it's from, tells you where it's from, where it's pasteurised, unpasteurised. So we've done all this for you, so you can impress your guests with all your cheese knowledge. Then, peach chutney. Sometimes we do a nice quince or change up the garnishes each week, but this week, of course, peaches are really coming into season now, so let's get a nice bit of that in there, like so. Let's get that on our board. Then little fork. And look at those lovely crackers. Start layering them up in the little teeth of the fork. Like so. We send you quite a few of those. So you can really taste each cheese as you go along. There you go. So that's our Uber Chef cheese course. Tasting notes alongside to finish the week. Hope you really enjoyed it. Remember, four weeks menus ahead every single week, so you can go on there, you can plan a meal in the, in, in the future uh, with your guests coming around. Constant changing menus, we don't repeat the menus, uh, so we always always have something different. Lots also planned uh, for you Chef coming up, so keep your eyes peeled, check the website, have a look at ordering. Hope you enjoy it.